Oh, good job. ពីមិត្តវិធីសម្ណាការលោកត្រីសេចក្តីវិធីលឹករាយការណ៍ពីស្ថានភាពវត្តមានវត្តមានពិធីនិងបុគ្គលដែលអស់ញាណ <coughs> ដោយជនជាប់ចោតបានស្នើសុំលះបងសិតតាមរយៈមេត្តាវីរបស់គាត់ក្នុងការ <coughs> សូមគ្រោះបាទអរគុណអង្គ <coughs> លោកវិជ្ជាបណ្ឌិតគួយសំណាងគ្រូពេទ្យទទួលពិនិត្យភាបាលខេត្តតំតុកភាពជំចាប់ចោតនៅមន្ទីរខុំខាងនៃអវត
and I'm not suggesting that, that this has been taking place, but let's just say that in the midst of a hypothetical civil law trial, it was discovered that a particular investigator had paid certain witnesses to give testimony, if that fact came out during the trial. Now, I don't think any judge, civil law or otherwise, would consider that to be a procedural defect. That's clearly something that goes to the substance of the evidence, something that should be discussed at the trial stage. Now, again, I'm not suggesting that that kind of thing has been taken. យើងបានដល់វិធីការជូនទៅមេត្តាវីកាពីក្តីលោកនំជីដើម្បីមានឱកាសតាំងសំណួរដេញដោលចំពោះសាក់សីនេះយើងប្រើពាក្យត្រ
Thank you, Mr. President. Again, good morning to you, Mr. Witness. I, I do have a few more questions for you today. Uh, hopefully it won't take too long. I suspect that I will finish in about an hour, certainly before the, the morning's coffee break. And I will endeavor to speak very slowly for my friends in the translation booth. Let me first start with an issue that was raised yesterday by my colleague, Major Sanarun. And again, Mr. Witness, I don't mean to bombard you in any way myself with repeated questions. I'm just trying to get a bit of clarity for the record and for our own, uh, our own position on this side of the stage. So if I could just return to something that Major Sun Arun discussed with you yesterday, and this is regarding Nguyen Chia's position with the People's Representative Assembly. And before I get to my, my follow-up question, let me just clarify, for your sake, for the record's sake, and for everyone's sake, that Nguyen Chia has never denied his position as chairman of that assembly. He did hold that position. He has said so on many occasions, and he stands by that position today. And let me just add that he is in no way ashamed of having held that position. Now, turning back to my colleague's question from yesterday, which I believe, if memory serves, was along the lines of how could you, Mr. Witness, how could you be so sure that Nguyen Chia was, as you suggested several times, responsible for the people? That was the question that I believe was asked. Now, I'd like to first, before I put my question, I'd like to turn to what you told one of the civil party lawyers on Tuesday of this week. And again, it's probably best if I quote from the draft transcript so you can correct me if, if I'm misstating your evidence. And I'm quoting now from Tuesday's uh, transcript at page 56, pages 56 and 57, when you, quote, when you were questioned on those documents by the co-investigating judges, and you were asked why Nguyen Chia was copied, and you said that, quote, Nguyen Chia was in charge of the service relating to people, end quote. Could you please explain to the chamber exactly what you meant when you said he was, quote, in charge of the sector relating to people? And this is, I'm still quoting the civil party, this was their precise question, the civil party lawyer, what were precisely his responsibilities? Nguyen Chia's responsibilities. And your answer was, it was a public announcement that Mr. Nguyen Chia was attached to the People's Representative Assembly, and he was also the chairperson of that institution. So, as the People's Representative, he shall know whatever matters that are relevant to the people, and he was at the Supreme Body to be in charge of all matters relevant to the people as he was representing them. Do you remember making that, uh, giving that answer, having that exchange with the civil party lawyer on Tuesday? បាទខ្ញុំបានចង់ចាំលើពាក្យសម្ដីខ្ញុំតែខ្ញុំបានឆ្លើយយ៉ាងមែនគឺខ្ញុំដឹងអឺជាចំហតទេឯកិច្ច
รบกยมเต้เป็นแมนจีกาอยู่ดังทาอาจจะไตรเนจัดใจอ่อยลูกตัวตัวคางประจีจนนู่นเต้แต่ในจีกลุ่มนัดเด็กยมยุลทาขนมถนัดจีดมนางเรียมันเนี้ยมันเนี้ยลูกมันแมนจีดมนางเรียพ่อคือทาจีประเทศรัฐสเปียดมนางประจีจนตูเตียงประเทศบ้านฉันกิดกาใบใบได้เตะตรงหนึ่งสกตกรบบอกประชาชนโลกก็เท่าตัดดังนี่จะอยู่บอลต่อรบบอกยมเทบาน Thank you Mr Witness and let me go back to the one of the first points you made about this public announcement that public announcement What did that public announcement say precisely? Did it simply announce that Nguyen c h i a was in charge of the People's Representative Assembly? But the k i m d a n g k i s a t e r n a k u k i m b a n s d a p u s h u กัมพูชีประเทศตะวันไตเป็นขยมทวีกาบันดาขยมบาวิชุสดับเจียบันดาบันดาลำใบดังตำนังในกาแต่ประเทศยืงเบียริจิมรานบันนาบันนาขนมสมัยนู้นเลยขยมจำชนะมันจะบาเต้คือบาตามขยมจองจำคลาคือประหารจิตนงชนะมันจะสับประมุยกีบานประจุมสเปียนิติกาลีมุยบาหายกีบานประกาศไซทานานานานาตุตุลกันนักประเทศรอดการเรียบจำริรัฐบิบาลยังไม่นานาจีรัฐมนตรีตีมวยนานาจีอปปะดีรัฐมนตรีนานาจีรัฐมนตรีอันนี้คือคิมดังตามระยะปัจจุบันหนึ่งไอ้ข้างสะพีดำนางไปเจจุนก็ยังได้กีบานประกาศสายทาดูสถาบันสะพีดำนางไปเจจุนนั่นคือเมียนลูกนุนจีนั่งให้เจียประเทียนสเปียบะนำนางไปเจียจนนั่งไอ้คางตุลาการคือเมียนลูกกองจับนั่งให้เจียประเทียนไอ้กระนาประเทียนรถก็เมียนลูกคิวสมพรนั่งให้เจียประเทียนบะกาบซายนี่คือมันขยมมันบานเคยจีรีเลอซอนในกาเรียบจอมไอ้จับรอดได้ปนเลยนี่คือจีกาเอาไว้เด็กชมจองจำบานคลาคลาไปปลุกทาเยอะไปเจียงสามสัปชนะมาเฮ้ยนานาตัวจำบานอ๋อบานนี่คือสมจุนสมจุนอยู่บอกใครใครบ้างปนนังเจ้า Thank you Mr Witness that's that's fine just one last question on this point when they mentioned Nguyen c h i a was the chairman of the People's Representative Assembly as far as you remember did they say anything else or, or simply that he held that position if you remember Thank you. Thank you very much. Moving on to another topic, a particular telegram. This is telegram 54. Uh, has been discussed quite a bit uh, since you've taken the stand. I don't want to ask you any substantive questions about that telegram, but just for everyone's benefit, I'll just uh, note the document number for the record. It's uh, E3 stroke 513. And that's Telegram 54. We've been discussing it. I think everyone's familiar with it. If you recall, Mr. Witness, that is the telegram that dealt with, uh, among other things, 
an alleged immoral act with a woman by someone called Sot. And so I just have a few questions about what you told the OCP here in court with respect to that document. Do you remember discussing that, that telegram, that one about Sot? Thank you. Thank you. And again, just uh, for the sake of clarity, I think it's, it's a good idea if I quote from the, the transcript. This is the draft transcript, uh, Monday's draft transcript. That's the 3rd of September, and I'm at pages 27 to 28. And I'm quoting now the question, when you were asked about why this type of telegram would have been sent to Nguyen Chia, you said anything involved with the internal situation and the violation of moral codes, they had to contact Nguyen Chia because Nguyen Chia was related, correction, because Nguyen Chia was in charge of the people. Is that an accurate summary of your statement, Mr. Sopong? The telegram which dealt with violations and the internal situations would be sent to Nguyen Chia. And your answer was, at that time, I was not able to know this because Pon was the one who oversaw all of this. But you asked me to help analyze on this. And based on my knowledge, the reason the message had to be sent to Om Nguyen Chia because he was in charge of social affairs and culture. So when it comes to the violation of moral code, it should be Uncle Nguyen Chia who would be, would be the person who whose the message was sent. That's my analysis." End quote. And now, with respect to this passage, I'm particularly interested in what you've referred to as your analysis. So my first question is, would you agree that that analysis that you did for the OCP was done after the fact, that is, much, much later, at a time after you were engaged as a DK telegram coder? Is that correct? ปาเตจิกาตรมตรอยได้ลูกบ้านเรียบรอบบ่มบัญญัญนี่อึ้งจังខ្ញុំក៏ដែលឆ្លើយទៅខាងពរិយញ្ញាចៅក្រមសិប
đôi biệt hạ ai cũng che ai cũng cho đây cả vì phía này vì mình men chỉ cặp bất này Thank you for that answer, Mr. Witness. And just to be very clear, this particular assumption is based on two things, Nunchia's title and the fact that Uncle Nguyen is written on that document. That's the basis for this assumption that, you, that you've made. Is that correct? Thank you very much for that clarification, Mr. Witness. Uh, I will turn to another topic. Yesterday morning, Mr. Witness, if you recall, Judge Lavergne took you through a, a number of telegrams covering a sort of a potpourri of topics. Do you, do you recall that? That was yesterday morning? I think it took the, the first part of the morning before the coffee break. I apologize, Mr. Witness, and I apologize for not asking earlier this morning if you, if you, if you were well. Are, are you feeling all right? Are you, are you able to continue? I will do that. Judge Lavernia is the gentleman sitting two spaces to the right of the president, and yesterday morning, he discussed a number of documents with you. Do you remember that exercise? That's my first question. In, indeed, a foreign judge, a French judge, Judge Lavergne, he's, he's wearing glasses and sitting two spaces to the right, to your right, of the president. He's a very tall gentleman. បាទខ្ញុំបានចង់ចាំបានខ្លះបាន <coughs> ទូលេខណាដែលលោកខាងនោះឲ្យខ្ញុំពោទូលេខឲ្យខ្ញុំនោះមកមកចំពោះអញ្ចឹងនឹងកណាន័យទេបាទលោកអាចឆ្លើយ
you did, uh, you did answer some questions on these documents, and I'm not really interested in the substance of them. It was a series of, I think, about 10, maybe a dozen documents, as I've said, and e each one was a telegram. And as Judge Laverne was discussing those documents with respect to each telegram, he mentioned that Nu and Chia, among others, were copied on those documents. Do you remember that? It's fine if you don't. គ្រប់សាទាំងអស់គឺកម្របត់ណាស់ឈ្មោះលោកនួនជាបាទគឺខ្ញុំរៀបរាប់គ្រប់សាទាំងអស់ហ្នឹងគឺមានអំអំន
kuruh nang je reang suot nang je tuk chum nun de ai tuk chum nun baat lok baat thua si k dai nae nom muoi oi khang khyom nang thua je tu lek dae je ka nae nom om pi vi thi dom nos rai s bieng khnong pe lae yeung chup khnong pe lae mul than ke chup nau Kruh thoma chiet Mà nè mì đọc đó nè Hãy có lúc sinh nhí đã Nuôn vì cơ rôm chân đây Bà Bà mì đọc đó nè Bà Để khi không khơi Thank you, Mr. Witness. If we could stay with that for a moment, just so I understand it. There was a problem with flooding, I think you said, at the local level, and the leadership wanted to address this problem, to solve this problem somehow, and Nunchia's signature was on the document. Is that, is that correct? Is that what you've said? Mình mến đọc xa rai rương tức chùm nôn thế Tức chùm nôn vì bán thư ôi khôi khát Phó lầm nam rồi bọc lời chì chôn Bọc mù lờ thà nâng Nè mù lờ thà nói cho mình chăm Chẳng lúc chôn chìa vì thi xa đầm bây ôi Vì chìa chôn dương Rù miền bài hô Miền lầm nam sẽ biên rù xóm Chẳng lúc bán bằng phó ôi vì chìa chôn nâng Ôi cà mà bị bà lên chốc chốc chì mùi bà chì chốn Nông ca khách khóm một con một con phó lầm lầm sẽ biên rùm xóm Mình thằng bị bố chân đáy ấy lặng Chân bà chá nà hô hai nằm bây giờ Ôi bà chốn nâng bàn hộp của mọi đạch bố bà Hay hạt lê khá bà lô cư nuôn bà Thank you Mr. Witness I'll just move on to my next point, uh, based on this, and now I would like to discuss a communication, a particular communication to Nunchia, and again, based on what you told the civil party lawyers on Tuesday, during your time as a telegram coder, I believe you said that you only saw one telegram relating to so-called moral offenses, and again, I'm referring to that, that telegram 54 the one that dealt with Sot. You said that was the only instance of a moral offense that, that you dealt with. Is that correct? But <laughs> ai cào bị nâng xa cái lại xem xem tôi chỉ mình hơi miên đi cà đường chân thì bà Thank you very much. And now, if we could turn perhaps to one of your statements to the investigators, and I have two or three questions about that, and I'm referring to document E3-67, and that's the written record of the interview you gave to the OCIJ on the 28th of March, 2009. And we've been discussing this document over the, the course of the last several days. Do you, do you remember this document? Do you remember this, this interview we discussed? This was your second interview. Let me then 
refresh your recollection and just simply read from a portion of this interview. And I'm referring now, again, that's document E3-67. That's the OCIJ interview of 28 March 2009. And I'm on English page 8. That's English ERN 00483970. Khmer ERN 00294542 and French ERN 00374937-38. And allow me to just read this out, Mr. Witness. This is your answer in response to a question put by one of the investigators. I did not know whether or not each location had made reasonable reports in accordance with the actual situations because some telegrams reported that the living standards of the people have become better, but actually they did not know that the people ate porridge. I did not know. I heard from my friends after they had gone home and returned that they were very sorry to see that the base was poor and deficient, that their parents did not have enough food to eat. But when one listened to the radio, it was broadcast that our country had plenty and was joyful in the Great Leap Forward. In the democratic Kampuchea time, I also listened to the broadcast while working. I was so very happy to hear that the people had better living. There were canals linking with each other, but the fact was different from what the radio was broadcast. Sometimes, someone wanted to have good face for himself, he just reported very good, very good. But some places had made true reports as well. Do you remember giving that answer to the OCIJ investigators? Thank you. Now, if I could just ask you one or two questions about this. It seems to me, it seems to me from reading this passage, that you yourself, in the telegram office during the DK period, didn't know, didn't have a, a, a true or a clear understanding of what was actually happening at the bases, and that that was in part because reports coming from the bases were not correct. Is that true? Is that an accurate summary of, of your position? ปานរបាយការទាំងអស់ខ្ញុំដូចប្រាប់លោកហើយថាខ្ញុំមិនដឹងអ្វីដែលកើតឡើងនៅមូលដ្ឋានពិតឬមិនពិតនោះទេប
จังบานสะวิมันเจชอบทีบานทวยกระนาดตำบอลไรจังทวยกระนาดภูมิพีบานทวยกระนาดภูมิพีไอจังทวยมันชมบานมันชมไอจังบานอาจจะไตรไอหูจังทวยสลายไอกบานไอคลังนี่ยี่เจียกาลูกลุ่นหนุ่มนายนี่เป็นเบียนเจสได้นึกถึงประเภทมนุษย์มวยจำนวนเออดูชนะคืออันนี้คือมันเป็นจีกาปัดแต่ทานจังแม่ได้คือจีกาบิเพียจังให้บ้านเด็กชมเคยซาคละก็เลยคละกิริกาธามาตาใบบุญตอนปรามตอนหลุดหดดอกก็เลยคละเมียนดอกมาจตาดอกตอนนั่นเนาะเจ้าแบบบ้านพอลจะรันมาเมื่อไรเจ้าให้แต่ไว้บ้านเจียประจีจนยืงนู่หูปบอนจังอันนี้จีจมนอตออยขยมนู่นนองสมัยนู่นฮะขยมกระพรุนไอ้เด้ให้ดอกขยมคืนสมดูบ่อลูกจังเต้าขยมจีกาบีเพียออยขยมทาปะเฮลจีมีนมนุษย์คลานั่นไงจังบานมกจังบานมอดบานจีรีกาขนมซาตูเลยนึกแบบบานลำบูสบายกาดิจิมรานแต่ตุยตัววิ้งเมียนดิจิมรานนั่นนะคือท่าสมบัยตะกาสเลียเปะกาหุบจกมันกรุบกรอนพองไอ้เขียนคืนซาตูเลยคละเออจะเขียนบอกนั่นคือจุนกาลองกาปัจจุนซ้อมเปรียตูจีองกอจีกระนัดไอ้ชราหน้าลูกคิดสุพรนั่งจับตูน้องมาใครมาใครนั่งประมาณดองเต้ไต้ปัจจีจุนตึงอ้อนนู้มันบานตัวตัวกาสเลียเปะโดยซ้อมร่มให้ออกมาโดยจะเป็นจูนมาสนเดนังเต๋อเวียตรอลนังเจ้าออกลิงโดยเฉพาะเดเวียมันเกิดอันนึงนี่ที่ตึงอ่อนนี่ที่เอาไว้เดี๋ยวที่เป็นจังอ่อยเคยนู่ที่บุพีไปที่จนพ้องนู่เป็นจังอ่อยเคยนู่อากับเกลียดักน้อมรบอ่อนลงนู่ตามมูลฐานนังพ้องสมอินเดียบอลเป็นนักบาล Thank you Thank you very much Mr Witness That was a very interesting answer If I may move on to another question Staying with this um, Staying with this document E3 stroke 6 7 Moving to English page 12 And that is English ERN 0 0 4 8 3 9 7 4 Khmer ERN 0 0 2 9 4 5 4 6 And French ERN 0 0 3 7 4 9 4 1 And again, I'll, I'll just quote to you an answer you gave to one of the questions of the OCIJ investigators. Quote, on imposing sanction and investigation, the Ankar had, not, had instructed not to do harm to the people. But as you already know, when an artillery was fired, sometimes it hit the target, and sometimes it did not hit the target we had set. Sometimes it scattered around. It was inevitable to cause death and injury. So my question to you, Mr. Witness, is: Do I understand that answer to mean that oftentimes people were harmed by what we would call, in, in what we would call collateral damage, what we would call collateral damage, that is, accidental consequences of what you might consider legitimate military activity? Mr. President, we would object to this question. Um, 
unless my learned friend can lay a foundation, um, we will object. Uh, we were instructed and took great care to elicit evidence from the witness's personal knowledge and experiences. Um, and, and the witness, if I recall correctly, has indicated that he did not go into the bases and nor did he ever observe any military operations. Again, uh, I, I, I stand to be corrected if, I, if otherwise was the case, but I would invite my friend to first lay a proper foundation um, ensure that the witness has direct knowledge of these events and then continue from there. I, I, I certainly agree with that. I, I apologize for not doing that first. Mr. Witness, let me ask you again, or let me just repeat a bit from your statement. When an artillery was fired, sometimes it hit the target, and sometimes it did not hit the target, we had said. Sometimes it scattered around. It was inevitable to cause death and injury. So my first question, which I should have asked you previously, what is the basis of your knowledge for that statement? បាទរឿងនេះខ្ញុំបានបញ្ជាក់ជូនអង្គសាវនាការអស់ហើយថាខ្ញុំមិនដឹងការពិតនៅមូលដ្ឋាននោះហើយក៏មិនដឹង <coughs> Very well, thank you, Mr. Witness. And moving on, uh, I think I've got about, just to give my colleagues some notice, I've got about three more questions and then I'll be finished. Mr. Witness, the other day, you mentioned in passing at some point during your testimony that you would be delighted, I, I think that's the word you used, delighted to come back here into court and to testify about certain foreign perpetrators of, of crimes in Cambodia. Who did you have in mind when, when you made that statement? Again, Mr. President, we would object uh, see no relevance. Your Honours, we would object. We see no relevance to the witness's uh, outlook on what other perpetrators may be responsible, what other trials may hypothetically take place, and what evidence he may hypothetically give. It's not uh, an issue that's within the scope of this trial. My very brief answer would be if it is within this witness's personal knowledge, that certain crimes were being committed during the DK period or shortly before the DK period by foreign perpetrators, then that is indeed relevant to many of the issues that we would like to have debated and discussed in this case. So let me perhaps rephrase the question and see if I can establish the basis of the witness's knowledge and go on from there. Mr. Witness, you mentioned this in passing. Perhaps it's best if you just explain to us what you were talking about so that we know how to deal with that, with that piece of information that you offered. Do you have some actual knowledge about foreign crimes being committed in Cambodia, in this country, either during the DK period or shortly before the DK period?
สัสมาชลอยตอบนงจุมโนนึงทีวิภูจุมโนนี่มันเปียปอนตนังอองให้ได้จอดประกันตื่นเลยได้จุจบเจ้าได้เยืงกระปงแต่ทือสัมนาการนี่ทีขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธานขอบคุณครับท่านประธาน Or the K5 plan, which was implemented in this country not very long after the demise of democratic Kampuchea, are you familiar with K5? Can you honors with with? Again, Mr. President, we would object for the same reasons with respect to my learned friend. Events. Occurring after the end of the democratic Kampuchea, um, unless there is a direct link with evidence that your honours are now hearing, uh, are simply irrelevant and should not be explored. Thank you, and, and as I've said several times before in this courtroom, the issue of whether or not deaths. Which occurred on a massive scale, on a rather massive scale, during the 1980s. Have been wrongfully attributed to the Khmer Rouge. That's an issue that we've briefed the chamber on. That's an issue that we've raised time and again. As far as we're concerned, it's obviously relevant. So I think the question is a legitimate one. I have a feeling I know what you're going to say, though. สุดได้จุดตัวนักสมังให้ในสุดได้จุดตัวระบบนำนางทัพปีนี้เมียนบุรุษฐานตรมตรึงสมนุนนี่มันเปรียบป้อนหนึ่งองค์ให้ได้บ้านหนึ่งกับปงเตะสุสานาคาเด่นดาวได้จับประกันตัวเลือกจุนจับเจ้านุตีสะใจมันไม่ชลอยตบจนหนึ่งสมนุนแบบนี้ตีขอบคุณครับ And I do have one more question, um, and Mr. Witness, thank you for bearing with me. This, this will be my last question. As, as someone who has specialized in, in secrecy and ambiguities and enigmas for a number of years, perhaps you can assist me and assist the Chamber as to the particular significance of a phrase that I've been, I've been struggling with for some time now. And I've been told, I, I've been instructed that, that this phrase is a kind of secret code that is a, a deliberately ambiguous use of, of the language, one that's utilized by certain individuals in positions of power in this country to exert their influence in subtle ways. And the phrase I'm referring to is as follows, the dogs bark, the caravan passes. Now, I fully understand the literal meaning of those individual words, and I think I can partially grasp the general sense of that phrase. However, I thought given your background and experience, you may be able to shed light on any deeper hidden meaning that attaches to that expression, especially when it is used by someone, for example, like Mr. Q. Kanarit. Would you have any, would you be able to shed any light on the deeper meaning of that phrase? Now, Please don't answer. My, my friend is on his feet. Again, Mr. President, we would object clearly. clearly. Again, Your Honours, we, we would object. I note it was my friend's last question, so I won't accuse him uh, of, of continuing to waste time, but clearly uh, the witness's comments about what people may say and what Uh, the meaning of those words may, may be completely divorced from the democratic Kampuchea context are irrelevant um, and, and should not be allowed. For the record, Your Honor, our, our position, as it has always been, is that the public statements, explicit 
implicit or otherwise by government officials, which may or may not be attempts to influence these proceedings, are indeed relevant, and they're relevant for the reasons that are already on the record, so I won't take up any more time of the chamber. That was indeed my last question, Mr. Witness. Thank you very much for bearing with me yesterday and today, and I do wish you all the best. Thank you. ແລະຕ້ອງໃຫ້ໃນໃນຈຸດຕ້ອງຕຶມຕຶ້ງໃນຈຸດຕ້ອງມີປະສິດທິພາສະໄຕໄມໂຄລາຍຕອບສະມ
that or one, there's one box that you took a note before providing the statement. Do you recall taking a note? And when they advise you of your rights, do you recall whether they advise you of your rights before they went on tape or, in other words, before you spoke on tape, or was it after you began speaking on tape? ឬក៏ថាការប្រាប់នឹងគឺថាចាប់ផ្ដើមនៅមុនការធាត់ uh, just one technical matter. One of the boxes also asks if you uh, know any foreign languages and you say that you declared uh, that you cannot read or write any languages. Do you recall ticking that box off? But, uh, all right, thank you. Uh, so that would explain why later on in your interview you, you indicated that when you began teaching the children, you were teaching French and English. That you had limited knowledge and you were, but with that limited knowledge you were teaching the children, but for the purposes of this interview, your knowledge was not sufficient. And បងរៀនរីយាជាភាសាបារាំងនៅអង់គ្លេសទេគឺថាបងរៀនឲ្យគេ <coughs> Thank you very much. And then if we look at the very last page of, uh, of this document, uh, we see that a copy of this was provided to you in writing and that this document was read to you and you had no objections before signing it. And then very well. And we can see the date that the date is the 27th of March 2009, which is about five weeks after the statement, and one day before you gave your second statement. Is that right? Right.
บางจังเขียวมันบางคืนอาจจับดำเป็นนาได้จับดำลูกลูกก็มีตัววิไม่เคยการว่าอาจเป็นโยยิงบางเทถ้าตาสมดุลได้ลูกสูประมาณนี้มีมีการเปรียบปอนต์อังไห้ได้จับประกันเลยจุนจับจอดนั่งยังไม่คลาดตื้อยังสู้ลูกเป็นท่าตาอัมลองไปนำนาการเสื่อมเกตแต่บอกถ้าจะกรอมเสื่อมเกตนึกลูกได้มันเมื่อไอ้กระซ่าอ่อนนึกได้หรือตีนี่คือสำนวนระบายยิงยูอ่ะสิมีมิสเตอร์ประธานลูกที่ได้รีดเลยสู้เขียมทำมาจากบ้านที่บ้านที่บ้านที่บ้านที่บ้านที่บ้านที่บ้านที่บ้านที่บ้านที่บ้านที่บ้านที่บ้านที่บ้านที่บ้านที่บ้านที่บ้านที่บ้านที่บ To go over all of the transcripts or all of the tapes, and the answer to that is absolutely not. And the better question is, did the entire bench have the opportunity to read everything? And the answer to that would be no. It's physically and humanly impossible. But part of our due diligence is to explore this area, because the question is: Is his testimony today based on his memory back then, or was it based on events that occurred during the taking of his testimony, where he was shown documents? And we will also show that some things he said on tape. เปียปอนจะมวยนังวิเทียนจะถือประมุยประดังส้มโมกับพิบได้การมันกระรุบวิเทียนปัญญาในขนมกระทาขันปีในวิเทียนนุชใจถ่าขนมกำลองปีลในกระสืบสู้หรือเปได้เพียกีแตงไลยุลเคยถ่ามีภายในนามมวยตระบานจัดตกเกี่ยวมุกแค่เพียกีโนอาจได้เปียประดังส้มได้เป็นเจ้าพิมูลให้เตอร์ถ่าจะกรอมสืบบังเกตดำไปชนะส้มอ้อยถ่าจะกรอมสืบบังเกตประดังเตอร์อังจิมบุเรจมุนจมเรียสนาสมเทวมุกเพียบสัจจะรำซื้อบังเกตไตรจันเดกาได้อาเจกาตัวตัวเยอะหรือปัตตาไซสนาสมเพลียมเพลียมตามแต่อาเทวเตบานหนึ่งขนมกรุบกันในจังอ๋อไตรเทวมุนเปลจันเดกาดำนอสไลเดกาแบบนี้คือจะกรรมทุกในมาดังตัวได้อันลองตามวิเทียนตีขนมนี้เฮยชลอยตบหนึ่งปัญหานี้คือจะทำประมวยผมเปิลยังบันอานปีดองเฮยคือแบบบางบางห้างอย่างปีในการดำเนินสายแก่ดำเนินกับเขามันกระโดดเทียนปัญญาในขนมกาสืบสู้ขมิ้นปัญหาหน้ามุ้ยได้อายเปรียบป้อนหนึ่งกับเขาในเตบิธีแบบนี้อายตระบานเลือกล้างในจุดปูมกอองจุดเดียร์ระดับบุ้งหรืออองจุดเดียร์ตลาดกากับปูเลยนี่คือปัญหาได้ยังเพื่อการกอดถุงก้อนไปพวกโลกขึ้นทางตั้งสมดุลนี่คือโดยที่บางห้างอย่างปีเพียบเปรียบป้อนหนึ่งอองให้ได้เจ้าประกันได้เลยจุดเจ้าเจ้าไปพวกปัญหานี้คือยังทวีการงี้ในขนมกาดังดาวเปะปอนจะมีนางอ่อนให้ได้เจาะประกันดาวบรรทุกเลยชุนจับเจ้ายังก่อนจะจ้องไปเชื่อไอ้ลูกไปเชื่อไอ้บรรชบล็อปัญหาหนึ่งที่พี่ปู่ยังมันคืนปัญหานี้ไปเจาะลางให้ได้ Well, thank you, Mr. President, but I must take exception because what you are suggesting is that we do not have the opportunity to challenge the witness's testimony. That's what I'm hearing. You are taking that right away from us. I'm not seeking nullification of the process. Now, one of the other judges may think that that's what I'm doing, but that is not what I'm doing. What I am doing, however, is showing that some things were said to the gentleman on the tape that never made it. Also, We will hear, we will hear uh, part of the tape where it is acknowledged that he spoke with the, uh, these investigators the day before. These two investigators are the same investigators involved in, a, in another matter. And in fact, one of the, the national investigators we now learn is related to one of the national prosecutors. 
And so these are the sort of issues that we want to explore. I certainly want to explore what happened the day before. Was he shown documents? How long was the conversation? Why was he, uh, that initial uh, interview tape recorded? What's the purpose of having a dress rehearsal? If you're going to try to have uh, some transparency, which is the purpose of having Maître Carnavas, la Chambre tient à rappeler un certain nombre d'évidences. Tout d'abord, l'instruction judiciaire qui a précédé ce procès des années. Au cours de cette instruction, les actes d'instruction ont été versés au dossier. Ils ont été accessibles aux équipes de la défense. Toutes les questions que vous avez posées jusqu'à maintenant sont des questions qui sont fondées sur les procès-verbaux d'interrogatoire. Toutes les indications y figurent. Ces indications-là, elles étaient parfaitement accessibles tant pour vous que pour n'importe quel autre membre de l'équipe de la Défense. Si euh, le président a rappelé à nombreuses reprises la règle qui veut que les exceptions de l'unité doivent être déposées avant leur clôture, c'est pour une raison précise. Il n'est pas question ici que nous refassions l'instruction de l'instruction. J'ajouterai aussi que, en ce qui concerne les enregistrements sonores des auditions, ces enregistrements sonores existaient Bien évidemment, en Khmer, il n'y avait pas de transcription et non plus de traduction dans les langues anglaises ou françaises. Néanmoins, chaque équipe des accusés comporte des avocats cambodgiens et chaque avocat cambodgien avait la faculté d'écouter, s'il le souhaitait, ces enregistrements audio. Alors, il y a quand même des interrogations à se poser et... Que faisaient les avocats de la Défense 
au cours de ces nombreuses années d'instruction. Et ça, c'était des questions que vous avez vous posées vous-même. La Chambre souhaiterait, en tout état de cause, que nous puissions aborder des questions de fond et nous souhaiterions que euh, les questions concernant l'instruction Soit, euh, ne soit pas répétitif. Nous avons déjà été saisis de demandes écrites où ce même type de problème a été soulevé. La Chambre va y répondre. Mais je pense que nous avons suffisamment entendu de choses à ce sujet pour que nous passions à d'autres sujets. Thank you. At this point, I would like to play tape one, play four. And what we are about to hear, keeping in mind Judge Laverne's uh, remarks, which, in my humble submission, go to the investigative phase, and I'm not talking about the investigative phase, I'm talking about this gentleman's testimony, and perhaps there's a cultural divide or a, or a, uh, a legal divide from our legal tra different traditions, but I assume that we're here to try to get to the truth. I assume that. But if we, when we play this, we will hear on the tape, words to the effect, I would like you to narrate your life story a little bit as you briefed me yesterday. So the day before they went on tape, the day before he was advised of his rights, the day before uh, he was questioned on tape, there was an interview. What documents were shown to him in that interview? How long that interview took place? Where did that interview take place? All those sorts of questions I'm entitled to ask. And if I'm not entitled to ask, I will be making submissions, and I will be su submitting also the questions that I would have asked to help you get to the truth, which would appear there's a disinterest on the part of the trial chamber to actually get to the truth because those sorts of questions are essential in, in determining what weight, if any, to give this witness's testimony here in court because in part his testimony is on his statements which occasionally he has to refer to. He's told us on a number of occasions that he disavows what he said. Earlier he said that he, stood, that he signed it having agreed with the content. Now, if he signed it under oath, agreeing with the content, either he misunderstood, either somebody else put it in there, either it was suggested to him, but these are the sort of things that I'm entitled to explore and why. Because before you are submissions by the prosecution to hear hundreds of statements in lieu of, te of testimony. And when you pose the question to me, what I have been doing in my team for the last three or four years, well, let me remind the trial chamber that this was the very first case of this kind in Cambodia and all these, there were all sorts of legal issues that had to be addressed Otherwise, we would have waived them. So, and the team that you suggest is pales in comparison to the armada, the, the Roman legion of a team that the prosecution has. So, I'm entitled to explore this because it assists you to give weight to this, to this gentleman's testimony. I am not attacking the, the, uh, the, court, the office of the court investigative judges, albeit it may seem that way. And yes, my third investigative request, I submitted asking the modalities, how do they interview precisely, what are the, you know, how do they keep track of exculpatory evidence, what is the template. We never received an answer. Had we received an answer, perhaps we would be here. But I believe this is a sort of tape that will assist the gentleman to tell us how long the interview took the day before, because I wasn't there. Nobody was there. Only this gentleman was there, and the two investigators who were also involved under similar conditions in conducting such an interview. 
tuông tận nâng ca thưa ca sầm phiền đi tài mà đòi. Sầm phiền nằm Thank you, Mr. President. I'll, I'll try and be brief, but I think um, the record needs to be corrected in a number of respects. First of all, my learned friend referred to thousands of statements. Of course, as your honours know, that is not true. Uh, the, the initial reference to, was to, an up to thousands of statements. In fact, there were 943 written records filed over a period of three years. Certainly not an insurmountable workload for a, a, a team of lawyers and, and support. And let, let, also, let the record also reflect that the resources of the OCP are roughly equal to that of the defence teams. Um, returning to the issue of propriety of an inquiry, that my learned friend is, is uh, proposing, and if I may just, I note your honours directives, and I just want to uh, add to the record also, um, this statement was filed on the 15th of September 2009, several months before the investigation was closed. Uh, it was available to my learned friend. Um, out of those 900 plus written records, uh, a smaller number relates to the acts and conduct of the accused. One would have assumed those were the interviews to which the defence was paying attention and certainly interviews that would have been of interest to them as they were particularly to us. Having not raised any of these issues, uh, or inconsistencies with the co-investigating judges, having failed to request follow-up investigative action that would have been appropriate like, had the defence considered uh, there to be any inconsistency, they now come before you some three years after the interview to raise these issues. Uh, they do not come before you in good faith. That is our respectful submission. Um, and let me also say the following. We would agree with counsel that where significant inconsistencies arise, where there is a legitimate question as to the credibility of a witness, we would agree with our learned friends that, a, that, the, that some latitude should be given to them to explore uh, prior statements and prior transcripts. But what we have heard over the last several days is consistent and compelling testimony from this witness who has been at pains to stress the accuracy of his responses and to qualify those responses which he thought verged on speculation. Um, it is a question of degree. We would submit that this attempt to falsely create a, a sense of controversy, which simply is not there, uh, should not be entertained in this particular case. Uh, we are we will always support our learned friends' rights to test the evidence, but it is a question of degree, and in this case, they have certainly gone beyond that, which is legitimate, and we pr propose that our learned friend should now be directed to turn to alleged inconsistencies in the statements and, and, and test the witness's evidence in that manner. Thank you. បាទលលិតដល់ពេលសម្រាក់ហើយអស់មាន <coughs> Hãy subscribe cho